Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel, but before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you don't miss another one. But before we get into the thick of it, just wanted to say that the reason I didn't upload for the pressing game is because if you didn't see my message I put on YouTube, I said I'm only doing Premier League and Champions League games, so not FA Cup, not Carabao Cup, not that we're in it. But I just simply don't have enough time. If I could do all of the games, I would, but unfortunately I just simply don't have the time. Especially as I'm coming up to the end of my second college year, God help me. But yes lads, we have another Tottenham win. We're two games in a row, in the Premier League. What is going on? Also, I for the play ratings, I'm introducing decimals. Wow! What a revolutionary idea that's going to change the planet. But we're going to do what we usually do, we're going to do the play ratings, then we're going to analyse the game, and we're going to enjoy this one, analysing this one should be a blast. First up, Lloris, he gets a 6. Now, he didn't do much wrong, but to be honest, he didn't have a lot to actually do. Everything he needed to do, he did. You know, there were a couple of moments he put us under pressure with, you know, passes out to the defence, you know, not just booting it long. A lot of times he did just boot it long, which was good to see. He wasn't overthinking things or doing anything stupid, but there, there were a couple of moments where he did put our defence under a lot of pressure, but pretty solid performance from Hugo. Right, we got the back three, an absolute wall against City. Did not let anything through. Marshalled Haaland, but to be fair, City did really just starve him of the ball and weren't playing it to him. Shut down Haaland, you shut down City. They they have become one-dimensional, and that's mad saying that about City because they're the most... Can rip anything out of anywhere, and yet now they've become very one-dimensional. But this isn't a City fan channel. You know, they headed everything away. They were not letting anything through. They were just blocking after blocking after blocking. You know, Mahrez did hit the bar, which was nervy. But apart from that... Not many clear-cut chances at all. Stopped everything they wanted to do. Davies and Dyer both get eights. They were superb. Romero only gets a seven because of the red card. You know, it was silly from him. The first one was very silly. The second one was clever play from Grealish. It's what he does. This is what he does! Uh, lured in the foul. Second yellow for Romero uh, late in the game. But thankfully... Didn't affect anything. Obviously, well, we won't have him for the next couple of games. Perisic gets a 6.5. The first decimal on Tottenham Talk. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. He dealt with Mahrez a hell of a lot better than the reverse fixture. He was a good presence going forward, you know, with his crosses, you know, getting out into the wide areas and getting balls into the box. There were a couple of dodgy moments, a couple of silly passes here and there, but it was mostly clean from Perisic and, again, did what he had to do. Wasn't one of his best games, certainly wasn't one of his worst. Uh, a lot a lot improved from the last game against City. Next up, we have the man of the moment, Emerson Royale. These past few games, this man has turned into prime Cafu. I'm talking Brazilian genius. He has proven that he's not from Mongolia. He is, in fact, Brazilian. Absolutely pocketed Grealish. He's in there with his keys and card. His best performance for Spurs. Hands down, the his best. If it gets any better than that, I'll be surprised. But ever since Porro's been like even linked with us, he's just stepped up. He's like, I have got a challenge now. I'm going to show myself. And he's been absolutely incredible. Grealish passed him like once. And like, oh, he just, he was winning all the battles, all the duels. He wasn't letting him through. He wasn't letting him do what Grealish does. And was a good attacking presence as well as a defensive one. He gets an 8.5. Emerson, you are a king, my son. Keep it up, please. Disappointed I didn't get to see Porro, but Emerson was just on another level. Next up, we've got the midfield. We've got Hoiberg. An absolutely warrior performance from him. He gets an 8. Didn't let anything through with Ben Tanker. Them two partnered up really well. Brilliant assist for the goal. Pressed really well. The whole team pressed really well. Hoiberg got on the end of a loose Rodri pass. You know, was getting his shirt pulled and everything. Held them all off. Got it into Kane and Kane finished for the only goal of the match. It was a lot better from Hoiberg. These past few games, he's been a bit out of it, but this was much better from him. I mean, similar goes for Ben Tanker, to be fair. He only gets 0.5 lower than Hoiberg with a 7.5. You know, they worked really well together. He was pressing really well, as Hoiberg and the rest of the team were. Next up, we've got Kulisevsky. He wasn't as present as usual. He's usually a lot better than what he showed. He's only getting a 6.5, and usually a lot better. He popped up here and there with a couple of, you know, whipped in crosses and what have you, but he just didn't seem to be there as much for Kulisevsky. We were using Son a lot more, and I'm not saying Kulisevsky was starved the ball. He just, 
didn't seem to be as forward going as well, the rest of the team really. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, Harry Kane, the King Legend himself, gets the highest rating in the team at a 9. Absolute man of the moment, he breaks the record for Spurs' all-time goal scorer on 267 goals. Absolute club legend, will never have anyone like him again. He is a natural born goal scorer. And what, what more can I even say? It's Harry Kane, you know the deal, you know the package, you know what you're getting. Bing bang bosh, scores the winner. Son, I'm happy to report he is getting better and better as the games go on. He was brilliant against Preston and he was pretty good against Man City in this game as well. He gets a 7.5. He was better yet again, using the ball a lot better, keeping it better, making better runs, just running with it better. You know, first touch was a lot better, passing was a lot better, just all of his game was so much better. It does look like his confidence is getting a lot better as the games go on, which is lovely to see. If Son's happy, the world is happy. You can't hate the man. What a guy. I'm glad to see him eventually finding his feet again. Right, we're going to get into the analysis of the game now. I'm not going to make this segment too long today because there's not a whole lot to analyse, but we're going to do what we do. So leading up to the goal, which came 15 minutes into the game, we start as we usually do. Pretty terrible. Just soaking up pressure. I mean, in those first 15 minutes before the goal, I think City had about 87% possession. You know, the usual stuff from Spurs. And then we got our lucky break. I say lucky, it was brilliant pressure from the whole team. You know, Dyer stepping up, which led to Hoiberg stepping up. Pounces on the poor Rodri pass. Is having his shirt pulled, held back. I thought he'd taken it too far, but he gets it into Kane. And Kane does the rest and doesn't put it into the corner. He scuffs it a little bit into the ground. But it's good enough to get past Edison in goal. And bing bang bosh, 15 minutes into the game, he has broken the record and he is an absolute king. Now considering what happened in the reverse fixture, I was happy and I wasn't getting ahead of myself because there was so much left of the game to go. But little did I know, this was to be a defensive counter-attacking masterclass from Tottenham. And I mean absolute prime Conte ball, even though he wasn't there, in the flesh, Stellini. It's like having a Conte clone there but this wasn't like your performances against Brentford your Fulham this was this was class and considering we're playing a team like Manchester City this was a bitching performance yeah fucking bitching I mean to be fair we have helped Arsenal in the process but to be fair we've got to focus on ourselves at this point and you know every three points helps you've got to do what you've got to do at the end of the day don't you then after that goal we got so much better it was actually mad we could have scored another goal in that first half we could have scored another goal in that second half we were getting the more clearer chances man city were having a lot of the ball as they usually do but we're not doing anything with it they would just slowly trot forward pass it wide go backwards sideways backwards we'd put pressure on and like it was just that cycle then we'd eventually win it back and we would use the ball so much better than man city would it was just a brilliant counter-attacking performance we used our counter-attacks well could have scored one maybe even two more Bit of a stretch, but you know, Kane had a chance where he burst through two defenders and was through on goal, but uh, Edison saved. There was a couple of times where the ball was fiercely whipped into Kane from Emerson and Perisic, but just missed the ball. There was a flick on header from Davies at the near post that went just over the bar. Not all of these coming in the first half, obviously, but from the period after the goal to end of the half, we were playing really well. Not having a lot of the ball, but using it so well, creating chances, making good runs. Passing it well, evading pressure well, not doing anything stupid. And it was just a good, clean performance. And I say clean, the red card. <clears throat> what you want against City. That's how you want and need to play against City if you want to win. Come the second half and it was more of the same. City having a lot of the ball, us eventually just winning it back. And coming at City and creating chances, just counter-attacking really, really well. It was like that City game at the Etihad last season, just with the less goals, obviously. And on City, apart from Mahrez hitting the bar at the end of the first half, they didn't have barely any clear opportunities. A, a couple of swing and misses from Alvarez wide, a shot from Grealish curled a metre over the bar, a dragged shot wide by De Bruyne, but there was not a lot there from City. They cut off Haaland a lot, City, were not giving him the service when he was making all of these runs and that was outlined a lot by a lot of pundits and a lot of people fans we shut down Haaland including City shut him down themselves and it just made it so much easier for us you shut down Haaland you shut down City there's a 
good chance you're going to win the game. So we go one point off Newcastle in fourth. Newcastle do have the game in hand. We've got Leicester on the weekend. Expect that out hopefully on Sunday. And hopefully we can keep this form going. Beat Fulham 1-0. Beat Preston 3-0. Now we've beaten City 1-0. Hadn't conceded to go on a few games. And you know the record Harry Kane has against Leicester. Hopefully another win. We'll see you next weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.